Hello everyone. I am Dr. Mahesh Kumar Sharma, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Maharaja Guru Singh University. In today's video, I am going to discuss about the topic eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors have applications in various uh, areas such as in differential equations, mechanics, frequency analysis, and many others. So let's start with some very basic definitions. So now let us start with some very basic definitions. Suppose we have a square matrix of order n. The matrix could be real or could be a complex matrix. And suppose the matrix has a form A equal to Aij uh, with n number of rows and n number of columns. Here the first n in the matrix A, Aij and cos n, the first n represents the number of rows and the second n represents the number of columns. Since A is a square matrix, so we know, we know by the definition both n must be the same. Uh, now the characteristic polynomial of the matrix A is defined as the dominant of A minus lambda i. The characteristic polynomial is defined as pi lambda equal to the dominant of A minus lambda i. Here i represents the identity matrix of order n. So that is, in order to find out the characteristic polynomial, firstly you need to form a matrix as A minus lambda i and then calculate the dominant of that particular matrix. Now, the number lambda which we have used earlier in the definition of characteristic polynomial to dominant of A minus lambda i. The number lambda, which could be real or complex, is said to be an eigenvalue of the matrix A, provided it is a root of its characteristic polynomial. That is, firstly, we have to find out the characteristic polynomial, which is given by the dominant of A minus lambda i. Then we have to find out the root of that particular polynomial and the root which may be real or may be complex, is known as the eigenvalue of the particular matrix. Now, uh, we can also see, if A is a square matrix of order n, then its characteristic polynomial also uh, will be a polynomial of order n, and since the order of that polynomial is n, then by the fundamental theorem of algebra, we must have n number of roots. That, that means, if we have a square matrix of order n, we have n number of eigenvalues. Now, let us understand the above definition with the help of some examples. Uh, in the first example, suppose we have to find out the eigenvalue of a square matrix of order 2 and with the entries are 0, 1, 1, 0. Here, 0, 1 represents the first number of row and 1, 0 is represents the second row. So now by definition, the characteristic polynomial is given by a pi lambda equal to the dominoes of a minus lambda i. We have written i2. Here i is the identity matrix uh, of order 2. So if we put the values of a and i, then we get the value of a which is 0, 1, 1, 0 minus lambda and the value of i2 which is the identity matrix of order 2 which is we have 1, 0, 0, 1. Then this gives us a determinant of minus lambda, 1, 1 minus lambda. And if we solve this determinant, we have lambda as square minus 1. So in that case, we have a polynomial of order 2, which is lambda as square minus 1. If we solve that polynomial to, uh, to find out the roots of the polynomial, then we have lambda as square equal to 1, which gives lambda equal to plus 1 and minus 1. So in that case, we have two number of roots. For the one is plus 1 and the another one is the minus 1. And therefore, these roots are known as the eigenvalue. So we have two eigenvalues, plus 1 and minus 1 for the square matrix of order i. Now, since A is a square matrix of order 2, so we have two eigenvalues, which plus 1 and minus 1. Remember, eigenvalues could also be same. That means eigenvalue may also repeat. It's very possible that in some example, the eigenvalues are same. So eigenvalues could be same, could be different, could be imaginary. All the possibilities are here. So in that case, in that particular example, we have two eigenvalues, which is plus 1 and minus 1. Now, oh, let us consider one more example, where the entries of matrix are now 0, 1, minus 1. So we need to find out the eigenvalue of a square matrix of order 2. The matrix A is A with the entries 0, 1 and minus 1, 0. 0, 1 are the entries in the first row 
minus from 0 or the entries in the second row. So now my definition that let this is polynomial is equal to my pi lambda equal to the dominant of a minus lambda i q which is equal to the dominant of a the value of if you put the value of a which is 0 1 minus from 0 minus lambda i2 which is the identity matrix of order 2 which has the entry 0 1 0 0 by minus 1 no, so the 1 0 and 0 1 then the resultant matrix is minus lambda 1 minus 1 minus lambda so if we solve the dominant of that particular matrix we have lambda is pure plus 1 so if we try to find out the root of this polynomial since the polynomial of is of order 2 then we have two number of roots so if we equate the polynomial with 0 we have lambda square equal to minus 1 and we have two number of roots lambda equal to plus 1 plus i so lambda equal to plus i lambda equal to minus i now these two are the imaginary numbers and these two are known as the eigenvalues of that particular matrix now we can see the matrix a has entries which are real numbers but the eigenvalues are imaginary numbers. So this may be possible that the matrix has a real number of entries, but the eigenvalues could be imaginary. It, it is also possible that the matrix A has imaginary number of entries, but the eigenvalues are real. In example number three, which is the next example, uh, we will discuss with us uh, in the next example that the matrix of A uh, in the matrix A has imaginary number of entries, but the eigenvalue could be uh, Real numbers. Let us take one more example where the entries of the matrix are this time complex number. Suppose the matrix is A and then, uh, suppose the matrix is A, which is a square matrix of order 2, and the entries are 0i minus i and 0. Here, 0i uh, represents the first, first row and minus i0 represents the second row. So now, uh, by definition, the polynomial is given by pi lambda, which is nothing but the dominant, which is nothing but the, the dominant of the matrix A minus lambda i2. Uh, if you put the values of A, uh, which is 0 i minus i2 lambda, which represents the eigenvalue, and i2, i2 is the identity matrix of order, which is one which has which has entries 1, 0, and 0, 1. Then uh, we have to solve the resultant matrix which is minus lambda i minus i a minus lambda and the dominant of this matrix is given by lambda square minus 1. So now clearly the characteristic polynomial lambda square minus 1 since this is a polynomial of order 2 so we have two number of roots and if you find out the roots of the polynomial then the roots are given by plus 1 and minus 1. Now we can see that. The matrix A has the entries which are the complex numbers 0, i, and minus i, but the eigenvalues are real numbers. So, in example number one, uh, we have a matrix A where the entries are real numbers, the eigenvalues are also real numbers. In the second example, example number two, we have seen the matrix A has entries a real number, but the eigenvalues are imaginary number. But example number three, the matrix A has the entries imaginary number. But the eigenvalues are the real numbers. So, uh, if someone asks that, uh, is the eigenvalues depends uh, the nature of the eigenvalues for this rational or real number depends on the nature of the matrix? Then this is not true. Uh, a matrix which has real entries may have uh, imaginary eigenvalue, whereas if a matrix A has imaginary eigenvalue, it may have real eigenvalues. Now, let us discuss a new concept which is eigenvector. By definition, a non-zero vector x with order n cross 1 that satisfy a particular relation which is ax equal to lambda x is said to be an eigenvector of a. We have uh, clearly written that a, a vector x must be non-zero. So whenever we are talking about an eigenvector, the vector x must be a non-zero vector. The above relation to can also be rearranged or rearranged as a minus lambda i x equal to 0. Remember, relation number 1, relation number 2, both are equivalent. So, in some of the books, you will see the relation as a minus lambda i x equal to 0. In some of the books, it is, it is written as a x equal to lambda x, but both are the equal. So, basically, in order to find, an, find out an eigenvector, we have to 
uh, corresponding to particular eigen value we have to solve a minus lambda i x equal to 0 remember if a is a square matrix suppose a is a square matrix of order n then we have n number of eigen values then for each particular eigen value we have to find a different eigen vector so if we have n eigen value we have to find n number of eigen vectors now let us find out the eigen vector in case of example number one, where the matrix A has the entries 0, 1, and 1, 0. Here, 0, 1 represents the first row and 1, 0 represents the second row. And the eigenvalues in that case that we have determined earlier was plus 1 and minus 1. So, firstly, uh, suppose we will if we have to calculate the eigenvalue, eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue plus 1. Now since we have two eigenvalues in example number 1, plus 1 and minus 1. So now we have to calculate two eigenvectors. The first eigenvector will be calculated corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to 1 and the second eigenvector that will be calculated will be the eigenvector corresponding, corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to minus 1. Now to calculate the eigenvector x equal to x1 x2 transform corresponding to the first eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to 1 uh, plus 1 we need to solve a minus i x equal to 0 which we have uh, uh, given as equation number 5 in the previous slide. Now uh, we have it, we have written x equal to x1 x2 transpose. Now here the x represents a vector which is a column vector. So remember whenever we are finding out the eigenvector the eigenvector will be a column vector. So now we, have, we need to solve a minus lambda i x equal to 0. Since lambda is 1, so we have put the value of lambda equal to 1 and the expression become a minus i x equal to 0. So here lambda is not written because lambda 1 is 1. So we are not writing out the value of lambda 1. We are directly written a minus i x equal to 0. So if we put the value of a, which is 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, uh, that is a lambda which is uh, 1 in that case and i which is a square matrix alternative matrix of order 2 1 0 0 1 are the entries so if we uh, uh, if we replace lambda with 1 and we solve a minus lambda a x equal to 0 this gives us a system of equation which is minus x1 plus x2 equal to 0 and x1 minus x2 equal to 0 and uh, the system uh, equation is represented by equation number 8. So now in this uh, we can say clearly that the above system of equation has infinite number of solutions. So uh, if we write this equation number 8 in the matrix form then the entries of matrix will be minus 1, 1, 1 and minus 1 and if we will find out the dominant of that matrix, matrix then the determinant will be 0. So this is the reason the above system of equation, equation number 8 has an infinite number of solutions. So if we pick the second equation from equation number 8 and we solve the equation, we get x1 equal to x2. And if we choose, since we have infinite number of solutions, we can choose give any value to x1, x2 or x1. So if we give uh, a value x2 to be 1, then we have x1 is also equal to 1. Thus, the eigenvector is given by 1, 1 transpose, or you can say a column vector 1, 1 is an eigenvector in that particular case. In order to define eigenvector corresponding to second eigenvalue that is minus 1, we need to solve a plus ix equal to 0. So, we have to calculate the eigenvector x, which is x1, x2 transpose. Again, the eigenvector x is here, a column vector corresponding to the second eigenvalue lambda 1 uh, lambda 2 that is lambda 2 equal to minus 1 we need to solve a plus i x equal to 0 so if we put the values the value of a which is 0 1 1 0 plus the value of lambda 1 which is minus 1 since uh, the formula is a minus lambda i x equal to 0 so if we put the value of lambda to be minus 1 then the expression become a plus i x equal to that is why we have written a plus i x equal to 0 in equation number 9. So the value of a is 0, 1, 1, 0 plus 1, the value of i is 1, 0, 0, 1. If we put this value and we solve uh, this uh, system of equation, then we have uh, uh, the system of equation is uh, x1 plus x2 equal to 0, x1 plus x2 equal to 0. From equation 11, we can see 
the both equations are same x1 plus x2 equal to 0 x1 plus x2 equal to 0 and if we check the dominant of this uh, particular system that is given in equation number 11 then the matrix uh, in that case is a matrix has the entry 1 1 1 and 1 and the dominant is again 0 so clearly the system uh, equation system equation equation number 11 has an infinite number of solutions and since we have an infinite number of solutions, so if we pick any equation for equation number 11 and we solve, we obtain x1 is equal to minus of x2. So if we select x1 to be 1, then x2 is also given to be minus 1. Thus the eigenvector in that case becomes 1 minus 1 transform. Since we have written 1 minus 1 transform, then again x, x here is a column vector. So, uh, in case of lambda 1 equal to minus 1, the eigenvector is given by 1 minus 1 transform. So, in the, in the first case, when uh, we have the first eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to plus 1, then the eigenvector was uh, 1, 1 transform. But in the second case, the eigenvector is 1 minus 1 transform. Uh, thank you very much. This is all in the today's video.